Lesson 5-7, Solving Inequalities, and in this lesson, you learn to solve inequalities with rational numbers. Why is it important? You can use inequalities to solve budget problems. So in this song, so let's root, root, root for the home team. You hear this every time in a, in a baseball game. Commentators and athletes often talk about the advantage of being the home team. Being the home team with the new home field may even be better. When a baseball team has a winning average of 0 .600, this means they have won 0 .600 or three-fifths of their games, or if you want to put it in percentage, 60% of the games. The table at the right lists the winning rates for teams in their first season in new homes. In 1995, Colorado Ro Rockies opened in the new park. As uh, of May 22nd, their winning average at home was 0 0.600. How much would the Rockies have to raise their winning average to have the best new field record? And these are uh, the records for each of the uh, uh, Major League Baseball teams. Jacobs Fields, 1994 Indians, 0.686. Sky Dome, the Blue Jays, 0.618. Kominsky Park, the White Sox, 0 0.568. Camden Yards is... Um, uh, Baltimore, 0 0.531. The ballpark, uh, Rangers, 0 0.492. And the Metrodome for the Twins, 0 0.457. So it's asking how much would the Rockies have to raise their winning average to have the best new field record. Since in this case, the best new field record is the, uh, the Indians, 1994, at Jacobs Field at 0 0.686. Okay, before we answer that question, Let's learn the concept. The amount that Colorado team needs to raise their average should be an inequality since anything greater than the present record will give them the best new field record. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get the current average, which is 0 .00, 0 0.600, and add the increase, which we don't know yet. We'll uh, uh, define it as x is greater than or equal to, or sorry, is greater than the current record the Indians hold, which is 0 0.686. So this is our inequality, and if we write it, it's 0 0.600, okay, uh, plus x is greater than 0 0.686. We want to solve for the variable x, so what do we do? We subtract 0 0.600 to, to, uh, from both sides, because we want to undo 0 0.6. 0.600 to isolate x. So doing so, we subtract 0 0.600 to both sides. We end up with x, okay, is greater than 0 0.086. So the Rockies would have to increase their winning record by more than 0 0.086 to establish a new home field advantage record. Okay? So you can solve rational inequalities using the same skills you use to solve inequalities involving integers. So same rules apply. Let's take a look at example one. We want to solve this inequality and we want to graph it. Okay, graph each solution on a number line. So you have a plus three eighths is greater than two. We need to we want to isolate a on one side of our inequality. That means we need to undo three eighths. And in order to undo 3 eighths, we subtract 3 eighths to both sides. So after subtracting 3 eighths, okay, from each side of our inequality, we're left with a is greater than 16 over 8 minus 3 over 8. Why? We get the LCD of 1 and 8, which is 8. And uh, we rename 2 with a denominator, denominator of 8 to become 16 over 8. Subtract that, we end up with 8. A equals 13 over 8, or 1 and 5 eighths. Okay, and if we want to check our inequality, see if the solution is right. We try 2, because 2 is a number greater than 1 and 5 eighths. You can try any number, uh, 3, 4, 5, even 100, okay, for as long as it, it is greater than 1 and 5 eighths. And then in this case, we just tried 2. So a plus 3 eighths greater than 2. Okay. We substitute the value 2 to a because that's what we, we said that we're going to try 2. 
So 2 and 3 eighths is greater than 2. It checks out. The solution A greater than 1 and 5 eighths for all numbers greater than uh, all numbers greater than 1 and 5 eighths. If you want to graph this inequality, remember that is a greater than symbol. So that's an open dot. And since it's pointing away from the variable, it goes to the right. It's an open dot in 1 and 5 eighths going to the right. Okay, let's take a look at letter B. 14.92 plus R greater than 7.65. We want to isolate R. That means we need to undo 14.92. So we need to, to subtract 14.92 okay, from each side. So we subtract 14.92 from each side of the equation of uh, the inequality. I'm sorry. Doing so, we isolate R. Okay, we end up with R is greater than or equal to negative 7.27. Okay, after getting the subtraction or the difference of uh, 7.65 and 14.92. Okay, and then to check our inequality solution, we get a number greater than or equal to negative 7.27. So we try 7, negative 7, because negative 7 is a number greater than negative 7.27. Okay. We get our inequality, substitute the value, see if it is greater than uh, 7.67. Yes, it is. It checks out. So we graph it. Since it's a greater than or equal to uh, symbol, that means it's a closed dot. And, it's, and, and since the inequality is pointing away from the variable, it's a closed dot that goes to the right. Okay? And there you have it, a closed dot on... Uh, negative 7.27 going to the right okay and that is example number two and let's do example number three example number three can tr translate uh, a phrase into an inequality involving rational number numbers let's take a look at this one example number two if they say if the shoe fits wear it but people often wear shoes that don't fit properly podiatrists recommend that a shoe be at least three eight inches, okay. Be at least three eighths of an inch, but no more than one half of an inch longer than your foot. If a shoe is nine and a half inches long, how long should the wearer's foot be? So let's just, let's look at take a look at our problem, and we know that the length of our shoe. We know the length of our shoe. We need to find the length of the wearer's foot, and the wearer's foot should fall into this category should be at least three-eighths of an inch but no more than one of an inch longer than your foot so how do we plan to solve this first things first of course we create a let statement okay we need to create two inequalities and let f represent the length of the foot so knowing that we write our inequalities this is our first inequality we get our foot length which is our f and then we add okay Three eighths of an inch because it has to be uh, greater than three eighths of an inch. Okay, be at least three eighths of an inch. Sorry, so at least means okay, no more than. I'm sorry. What does it say? Uh, at least three eighths of an inch. Yes, it is. So it's no more than. Okay, three eighths of an inch. Okay. You get your F plus 3 eighths of an inch should be no more than 9 and 1 half inches, which is the length of your foot. Okay, solving this inequality, we subtract 3 eighths to both sides or from each side of the inequality. Okay, end up with F is less than uh, 9 and 4 eighths minus 3 eighths. Okay, uh, like terms there, so you have 9 and uh, sorry, uh, like fractions, so you simply subtract 4 minus 3, that gives you 1 eighth. F is less than or equal to 9 and 1 eighth. Okay? That is our first inequality. Okay? Oops, got that up there. The second one is going to be something like this. Okay? We get our foot length. 
okay and then uh, we add one half of an inch okay is no more than okay nine and one half inches so that is our inequality and we want to if we want to solve for f in this case we need to undo one half by subtracting one half from each side and then we left with f equals nine because nine and one half minus one half will give us nine so f not equals f is greater than or equal to nine which means that the foot should be between nine okay and nine and one eighths inches long because of these two answers okay so if we check our answer see if it makes sense or not nine and one eighth plus three eighths will give us nine and one half and nine plus one half will give us nine and one half so the answer is pretty much reasonable okay and that's the end of our lesson Thank you for watching.